We went on a crazy dead of winter EV road trip and we went in the coldest week of the year, 2,300 kilometers around Northern Ontario, visiting every stop of the EV supply chain. We rented a Tesla. Uh, we got the Tesla Model 3 because it's the most popular EV in Canada and we wanted to have a typical Canadian EV experience. So we started out in Toronto and we drove straight north to North Bay. And our first stop in North Bay was Miller Technology, not a car company most people have ever heard of, but they make EVs for the mining industry. You're seeing them take perfectly good Toyota Land Cruisers. They're putting electric motors into them. To have like a perfectly good truck and take the engine out and convert it to electric that way kind of blew my mind. And what they've also started doing now is making up custom from scratch EV, specially built for going into mines, and the thing is silent. Uh, they're also experimenting with um, putting this electric drivetrain that they've developed into other equipment for underground mining. So they uh, let us drive a prototype, which was a underground road grader, entirely electrified. And this thing makes the roads in the mines underground so they can drive the vehicles. It was quite an experience. It is not like a regular car. All right. Keep it slow. And here we go. Moving slowly. Okay, let's see now if we can turn, turn around. I only drove it about two or three kilometers an hour and I was worried about crashing the thing. Is there a thing and to know that they want to bring these into mines and to like be part of the EV supply chain or the green energy supply chain is like really fun. Yeah, I didn't want to go that fast. <laughs> I saw lots of personal vehicles around there, so I was like, uh, we're headed to New Liskert, Ontario. Just outside Cobalt, we visited uh, North America's first Cobalt refinery. And the idea is that uh, instead of refining in China, where all the current Cobalt in the world is refined, uh, that they could do it in Northern Ontario and they could do it uh, at very much greener. It would be fewer carbon emissions, less pollution. Electra, like this massive building in the middle of nowhere. You walk in and you can actually see them doing the filter pressing. It's just amazing. What they actually had was an old refinery that they were able to retool the process to make it a cobalt refinery. And while they're at it, they're actually doing a second stream, which is recycling. So the refinery, because it's doing two things at once, refining um, cobalt from the ground and, refining, and recycling old batteries, they're constantly tweaking their process. And so they have to test it to make sure that it's got the right chemical process going on. What you can see is they have the different examples of what they do. And so the, they showed us in, originally in jars, you can see the black material is called black mass and it is essentially ground up batteries. Whether it's a battery from your cell phone, a battery from your laptop, any, or a battery from an EV, any lithium ion battery can be ground up and recycled almost 100% into a new battery. And uh, so they start with this black mass and when they put it through their process, they come out with three products on the other end. They separate out the graphite, which is black, then the lithium carbonate, which is white, and then they get this it's what they call MHP, which is essentially cobalt. You can see that there's a quick start to the whole process of refining recycled batteries right here in Ontario. And these three products get sent out the door and can they, they can literally be loaded up into trucks and sent to a battery factory where they're made into new batteries. So Cobalt Ontario is the site of one of Canada's first mining booms. While all this wealth came out of the ground, they also had, they were poisoning the lakes. People died in accidents all the time. And this is really where the modern mining industry learned all its lessons. So we visited the Cobalt Miners Museum and we were toured around by the local MP, Charlie Angus. The funny thing about Cobalt is that mining is, a, is like a family. People are cousins. And when we talk about where Canada belongs in this EV transformation, Cobalt is the place where it was, everything was done wrong, but Cobalt is also the place where we know how things could be done right. One of the 
big lessons you, you really take away, not necessarily from the museum, but from cobalt in general, is that it's all gone. It's all gone. After that, we went to Sudbury, where uh, obviously a lot of mining happens, and we went down one of the deepest mines in the world, called the Creighton Mine, run by Valet, and that's where they're mining nickel for EV batteries. So the mine is crazy. I've never seen anything like this. It is 2.5 kilometers deep. Going down the uh, skip is was something too. Like it's always fun because they use these little like uh, they have this little pole. It's almost like a little special Morse code they have. Like you'll hear. <laughs> and that's them saying whether they're going up to which level they're going up, if they're bringing people or if they're bringing equipment. So there's all that kind of communication going on. You know, you get in with all the morning shift. These are guys that go up and down every day. They don't think anything of it. When, we, when this thing started going down, it moves incredibly fast. But you drop like a rock into the ground. But when you're dropping into that mine, you just keep on going. It's like, you know, we're talking about something that the CN Tower elevator, for instance, you're going down five or six times that distance. The skip only goes down to 6,800 feet. And then the last 1,500 feet down, you have to get in a vehicle, which amazingly enough was like one of those electric vehicles. We had no idea that they're using EVs to mine. Because it doesn't generate as much heat, it doesn't generate any uh, exhaust, so they don't have to spend as much time and money and effort in ventilating the shaft. And what you do is you kind of go down a corkscrew down to the drift that you want to get into. It, it's, it's a network of tunnels that goes off in every direction. Right? So when you're down there, uh, it, it really feels almost like a subway tunnel. They've got lights running over top. They've got tracks that they run tr trains on, on the bottom. And as you kind of wind your way down into this uh, area. They've got little refuges for people to go off the side if there was ever an accident or anything like that. And then they've also got um, battery charging stations. So when their electric mining equipment needs to be recharged, it's not like a regular EV where you'd go to a station. They literally swap out the batteries. It's extremely hot in the mine. I guess when you're that deep, you're literally, <laughs> you're closer to the Earth's core. And so it is stinking hot down there. And that's actually one of the reasons why they are switching from diesel equipment to battery equipment. It's so that it, the diesel doesn't make it hotter than it has to be. Another stop on the EV supply chain that we don't often think about is steel. Because obviously if you're going to make a car, you need steel. And currently steel, most steel, is made from coal. In Northern Ontario, in Sault Ste. Marie, Algoma Steel is converting their coal-based process into an entirely electric process. They're gonna build an electric arc furnace and they're gonna cut their carbon footprint by 70%. The electric arc furnace was still under construction, but they did show us sort of what the old process looked like and it was straight out of Terminator. From the blast furnace, you're watching the molten iron and steel come rolling out of this thing and there's little sparks coming off. They melt down iron ore into a giant pool of molten lava. And even though it was negative 25 inside the building, you couldn't get close to this thing because it was just radiating heat. They add various things to it to make it into steel and then slowly but surely they roll it thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner they cool it with water jets that comes out the other end into something that can't be described any other way than a giant roll of duct tape. And if you look into the middle of the metal tape, even when it comes out, it finishes the process, this thing's still at 600 degrees Celsius. What was really interesting about this whole trip was that you realized Ontario's somewhat unique in the whole world in the sense that Every single step of the EV supply chain could happen pretty much here in Ontario or right around. And I mean from mining to refining to battery making to steel making to auto assembly, the whole package can happen pretty much right here. I grew up in mining towns. I'm from Sudbury, so to go underground in Sudbury, those are mines my dad worked, those are mines my father-in-law worked. That's mine where my uh, 
brother-in-law worked until recently when he retired. And seeing like the history of mining to go up to Cobalt and see the way the town is and then like meet Charlie Angus up there. For me, it was just a beautiful trip to, to do.